committed to the Contra Costa County Board of Education. Well, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Neil McChesney and staff who will give us an update as we are here today. Okay, um, I'm prepared to probably to try to cover all the um, important details here. Um, first, just, just a slight review um, to talk about um, the opportunities uh, that we've had to address this charter renewal process in public started with the September 6th Governing Board Retreat. Uh, September 10th regular Governing Board meeting, then the special Governing Board meeting on the 25th. After that, we had a community and parent forum, October 1st here in the Walton East Room. Um, then the, uh, that Friday of the same week, we held a teacher and staff day uh, where Ms. Lindsay and myself Available to staff throughout the day to discuss the issue. And um, here we are tonight. So, pretty quickly. so six total um, hearings. So, speak. so uh, the most important part of this presentation is to try to uh, present some accurate feedback based on those two last um, meetings. Uh, that would be the October 1st parent and community member meeting and the October 3rd teacher and staff day. Um, I would say, just, a, just as a guesstimate, at the October 1st meeting, we had between 40 and 50 audience members. Um, and uh, I can't remember exactly how many actually spoke. We gave an opportunity, I think, that many people could just approach the mic and ask as many questions as they want. Probably at least 10 to 15. Um, and then on the October 3rd teacher and staff day, we had between 20 and 25 teachers and or staff come in. Um, the vast majority of them came, I think, for the food and the small talk, but uh, some actually did actually have questions about the charter and spent time addressing those. So I tried to capture everything in a uh, succinct fashion. And these are the issues that I think are outstanding, that people have concerns with, that have continued to raise questions and or discussion. Um, first of all, kind of in general, I think there's an apprehension version to some, some extent with change, the changes and updates in general. Um, we've done our best to articulate the rationale for each one of those changes, um, but I think that still exists to some extent. Um, more specifically, as you, the board has heard, there's um, concern about the governance section, the advisory and oversight uh, articulation of the committees, that alignment in terms of our training and actually actual practice uh, for the last two and a half years. And I'd say um, some amount of concern about inhibiting stakeholder involvement. Um, we have made attempts, um, as the board has been privy to, to uh, reassure stakeholders that that's certainly not the intent here, but that doesn't exist. Um, a second area of feedback or a topic for discussion is specifically in board member, member qualifications and most specifically about teachers and union membership. Work with the call. Um, you had a discussion and actually took action on a um, May versus Shell issue in terms of whether the teacher board representative uh, will uh, be a part of the collective bargaining unit or may be a uh, part of the collective bargaining unit. So that still exists. Um, the class size issue, uh, the fact that in the original iteration of the charter, we had Goal at least class size. In the new version, we articulated that section in terms of what we have accomplished and are doing. And in terms of the reduced class size piece, that was articulated um, as the board gave direction for it at a meeting. It's, I'm paraphrasing, but that we've been able to maintain a teacher student ratio that allows for effective instruction and learning. Um, again, and I think we've said this that. Uh, we believe that, that that information is dealt with outside of the scope of the charter. Um, this does not say that we're not interested in interested in class reduction as a strategy, perhaps one of many. Um, and it doesn't say we want to increase class size either. It just doesn't necessarily address it here. Um, there was some discussion specifically about special education language, both at the last board meeting and at the parent um, information meeting. And uh, as the board directed, Last, at the last board meeting, we had one parent in particular, Mr. Snow, um, who has been working with Mr. Lindsay on some suggested revisions. We actually took that language 
ran through our legal counsel and through um, our special education coordinator, who's Caitlin James. And I think came to a, a happy marriage with um, all parties, and that actually has been changed in the uh, new draft. I'll go through the, uh, that in a minute. Um, but one more current suspension issues. This is part of our suspension and expulsion policy. Um, that I think still, still uh, there's still some concerns around that area. Um, in general, we don't believe that uh, this language uh, binds us to anything. It's, it's uh, not, it's, I think, uh, not in contrast with ECHO, um, but that is still something that people might have concerns with. Um, we did have an employee raise a, a concern that, that perhaps has been overlooked or perhaps it's more annoying to address that um, children of employees are not given any enrollment priority, which is common practice in um, both school districts and other charter schools. That's something the board could look at if they like to, that was brought up. And then, um, in general, there was, especially at the parent uh, nine community night, there was lots of question and answers. For instance, um, we had one gentleman who asked about the loss process and what it was, and so we spent some time addressing that. Um, we had uh, an employee catch, what I believe was probably an honest mistake, or uh, something that we overlooked and that the legal counsel was trying to align our bylaws with the charter and strike any binding language that less is more kind of approach. There was an original clause in the first uh, petition that said that the administrative board representative could not be the executive director. And that was struck. Um, that is one of the changes that we did add back in because that was a legitimate mistake. There's no desire on the part of this executive director or uh, what the charter intent was to have an executive director on the board. So we have actually made that change. Um, there was some discussion about the satisfaction survey um, creation and results, which were included as an appendix. Um, we had a, a gentleman ask about our audit process and who our auditors were. We had, um, oh, there was a section in the um, first draft that was removed about any stakeholder submitting amendments to the um, charter petition to the board. That was originally removed because it was um, <coughs> unnecessary language. Anyone can come to the board at any time and make public comment, whether it be about changes to the um, petition or any other part of the school. But because stakeholders expressed some interest in that part being there, we actually added it back in and we clarified what that paragraph was in the uh, latest uh, draft. Uh, there were some general questions about the draft process, and, and uh, to be clear, I spent about 45 minutes at the beginning of that meeting kind of trying to do a comprehensive uh, presentation about the entire process from start to finish and specific language changes. Um, there was some con conversation about the board training, Dr. Carpenter, what the rationale was for that, um, what the results of that training were, and then we uh, discussed the Contra Costa County Board of Education I think that uh, provides comprehensive um, feedback on all of the issues that are outstanding and that came up um, in terms of the two meetings and the previous uh, board meetings. I don't think it's necessarily anything that the board is not already aware of, but I want to make sure we have that feedback. In draft number four, you'll notice that there are very, very, very few changes. And um, to be clear, the staff um, is awaiting more direction in terms of any further changes, if necessary. And um, the only changes we made were technical corrections. Um, we had a, a parent, um, a PSC president actually, point out uh, one correction that we made. This, I made some title changes in the appendix and the table of contents just to clarify that. Um, we did make those changes in special education language. We did add in back that exclusion for the executive director to be a board. Uh, representative. We, this was the uh, one that the parent pointed out to us. We had some outdated um, names and titles in our, in our course catalog, so we had to look at that. We did change the bylaws, um, which are in the, in the appendix, appendices, to match the most recent version in the uh, recent version of governance in the chart. And uh, there is one change that I, I knew about but didn't catch. Been brought up before, but someone pointed that out to me already. That in the operations and assurances part at the very beginning, the lead petitioner was originally Mr. Lindsay. We changed that based on uh, legal counsel suggestion and the board recommendation to 
should be the board, and it'll make that change uh, after this evening. Um, final piece of information I think is important. Um, the Contra Costa County Board of Education has officially confirmed that they will in fact offer us a public hearing for our charter renewal on October 15th and a decision on November 5th, assuming that we submit a charter petition after tonight. If we extend the timeline, that would be off the table, they would even consider their timeline. But in talks with their staff, they, uh, they understand the rationale for having the same board approved us and that has been around since our inception, be the ones that actually 